And how should planners approach getting meeting room name assignments included in their hotel contracts? Barbara, do you, you want to kick this one off? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think having, you know, as much as it's important to have specifics in the contract as it relates to the room block and the rates, obviously we talked about food as well. Function space is critical. This is where you're going to have the meeting. This is the reason you're getting together. So being able to understand the space that you're reserving and to plan accordingly, to sell sponsorships, to get budgets and bids for audiovisual and other services, obviously it's all critical. In a large hotel, the location of the space is critical. And many large hotels have space spread out uh, in a large area and groups have 10 minutes in between sessions or whatever the case may be. So there can be logistics, uh, logistical issues. All that said is I think putting room names in the contract is important, but I think equally important may be to identify the activity that is to take place in this room. Uh, is it a general session? Is it a breakout? Is it a welcome reception? Is it a staff office? And understanding capacity, estimated capacity, understanding room set. Uh, and in some cases, if it is a breakout in between sessions, understanding the need that these rooms be located close toward one another. So room names are important, equally important, I would say, giving information to the hotel about what's gonna take place in this room, uh, 24 hour holds, to the extent we're talking about a room that needs to be set, like a general session room over the course of many days is important. Uh, parameters, location, square footage, amenities, so to speak, of, of what the rooms may have. Those are also key components. Group is gonna be the best position to decide whether a particular room is gonna work for it. So the scenario that you mentioned, Lisa, about the ballroom not being available, I'm sure has happened to no one on today's <laughs> webinar. But just in case it happened to a friend of yours, I will say that having a benchmark of a room is helpful to better understand what other uh, options are out there. And then having a conversation is important. I realize groups can often be space hogs and they want to reserve more space. But if the opportunity is there that space can be released at request, I think that's a reasonable outcome. I do see a concern though with not having room names because again, I look at it from the group's perspective, so much of what the group's going to have to do to make this meeting successful is going to have to be built around the meetings and the space and these opportunities and they need to know where that's going to happen. And my last comment, Lisa, is something you always pick up on, which is if I'm a small group at a big hotel, I might not be able to get that clause and then vice versa, right? Uh, all that said, as I still think even with a, a small fish in, in a large hotel, uh, being able to earmark those areas and reserve them does become important. So um, I, I agree with everything Barbara said, um, but from the hotel perspective, arranging meeting spaces like Tetris, I think that's right, I'm not a gamer, but you know, the hotel is trying to <laughs> slot in groups um, as, as they come on the books and they're trying to figure out how to manage all their space. If you're not using room names, that gives them more opportunity to do that Tetris to put this one there and this one the other place and that one the other place. Now, if it's a wedding, obviously you want the grand ballroom or whatever it is and you don't want them substituting something in the basement. So it depends on the nature of your event. But something I don't see happening often enough is doing a contract, as Barbara said, what's going to happen in this room, how many people do we need, that kind of stuff, without the name and then setting a date six months in advance or eight months in advance at which point the room names are guaranteed because that gives the hotel the time to slot in other opportunities and often it's those catering events that they want to slot in relatively late and then confirm the names in time for you to do your planning and your printing of materials and all those kinds of things so that's an option that i don't see considered enough but again, as Barbara says, if it's something that's critical to your event, um, then that may be something you have to give something to get. If you're trying to get a commitment three years out that you will get rooms A, B, and C, then you may need to give up some concessions in order to get that guarantee. But otherwise, I agree with what Barbara says. Excellent as always. Guys, I cannot believe an hour has already gone by where we have about one minute left. So this will be our last question that we just answered. And we appreciate everybody who submitted questions in advance, who registered for the webinar that attended today or that was not able to attend. 
Like I said, we will be sending out the recorded version of the webinar early next week. We welcome any folks who did submit questions to continue providing your input and feedback on what you want to see in future webinars, as it really does form the foundation for what we present during these calls. So thank you again to everyone. We are offering everybody free trial of Hopskip. If anybody is indeed interested, we are putting up a, uh, a link to schedule a demo. Happy to give you a walkthrough of the platform. And we wish everybody has a wonderful rest of their day and a great weekend. Thank you, Lisa and Barbara, as well. As always, great job. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a great weekend. All right. Take care. Bye.